good morning everybody as you all know one of my main goals was to read 10 books this month may was going to be fantasy adventure month uh mostly because at the end of april i got on this huge fantasy adventure streak and didn't really want it to end so i just went ahead and declared may fantasy adventure month and so every single book I have read so far this month and the last couple books I plan to read toward the end of this month are all in the fantasy adventure genre. I figured today I would talk a little bit about all the books that I've read, what I liked about them, what I didn't like about them kind of deal, and do a little bit of a wrap up on that. So let's get started. Uh, the first Four books that I read this month were all part of the same series. Um, it is the Seven Realms series by Cinda Williams Chima. Uh, the first book is Demon King, then I believe The Exiled Queen, then The Grey Wolf Throne, and then Crimson Crown. This is the prequel series to Shattered Realms, which so far um, consists of Flamecaster, Shadowcaster, and Stormcaster, which I read last month absolutely loved. The third book completely blew me away. I am so excited for next April when the fourth book comes out because the third book was just so mind-blowingly good. The first book, the author actually knew what she was talking about when it comes to horses, which is so rare for fantasy adventure that I just fell in love with it. Second book was kind of eh, in my opinion, mostly because you didn't really cover any new ground, and to me it was just kind of slow and draggy in a lot of parts, and I really didn't connect as much with the characters as I did in the other part books but the third book more than made up for any of that so I was really 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 excited to read the prequel series because I fell in love with the world the characters I wanted to know more about the character dynamics of the um, characters mentioned in the sequel series that everybody keeps going on and on about how amazing they are and I have to say I was honestly let down quite a bit by the Seven Realm series like I don't know it Shattered Realms was beautiful, like, it had depth, it had scope to characters, while they were still, like, obviously teenagers and such, they weren't the annoying teenagers that turned me off of most fantasy adventure in the teen genre, um, so there weren't, real, like, really any unnecessary love triangles and this, that, and the other, and going into Seven Realms, I knew that there was going to be bits and pieces of that, because I read reviews before I read books, like, yes, sometimes they do spoil the books a little bit, but... I am so picky when it comes to books that I need to know that it's good before I read them kind of deal. So I knew that there was going to be some like entangled love interest going into this book series, but I didn't realize that it was going to be like 90% of the books. And she also developed a rather bad habit of talking around the action instead of just delving right into the action. And I feel like she also sort of gypped us with a huge battle sequence at the end. So I was just overall let down by the series as a whole. I did enjoy some of the books individually, like Crimson Crown was amazing. Yes, there was a little too much obsession with fire in my opinion, but I think overall that book was really, really good. Though I do not like misdirection and oh my god, he's dead is a plot device because I think it's overused, but hey, it was still really, really good. And I really, really appreciated the Shattered Realm series all the more after reading that. Like, I know that I was supposed to read Seven Realms first, but honestly, I'm kind of glad I did it backwards because I do not think I would have finished the Seven Realm series and gotten to the Shattered Realm series otherwise, which would have been heartbreaking because, again, Stormcaster was amazing. The next fantasy adventure book that I read this month, I believe, was Down Among the Sticks and Bones, which was the sequel to Every Heart a Doorway. And I really liked Every Heart a Doorway. I thought it was quirky and weird and definitely interesting even though it was really really short it was only 150 pages um but every heart of doorway was centered around the idea of what happens to the kids that come back from magical doorways and portals such as like what happens in narnia kind of deal and then they're thrown into a world that they don't want to be in and how do they cope with that so this one person set up a school for all of these misfits and you go through and learn more about each individual character and how they came to be where they were and what and like basically more about their characters through like what doors they went through and what they really connected with in their worlds and 
for such a short book, the character development in it was amazing and I loved it so much. And so I was really excited to read um, Down Among the Sticks and Bones, which I have to say was even better. Um, it was centered around two characters named Jacqueline and Jill, Jillian, or Jack and Jill. Um, they grew up in a really, really um, repressed household where their parents imposed their will and made one of them very, very feminine and one of them very, very tomboyish because their parents wanted a boy and a girl but ended up with twin girls instead, and their parents really shouldn't have been parents in the first place. And then they got sent down in a trunk into this magical world, which was kind of like Frankenstein's monster meets Dracula, and it was so, so cool. Um, I loved it. It was creepy, and it was very, very interesting, and there were LGBT characters in it, and it was just so cool. Um, and... I thoroughly loved every minute I spent reading that, which sadly were far too few. And I'm really looking forward to reading Beneath the Sugar Sky, which is book three, uh, which I just need to borrow from work so I can finish it. But that's a whole different story. Um, so Shannon McGuire, um, Every Heart of Doorway and Down Among the Sticks and Bones, you definitely need to read if you are into that sort of thing, because they are phenomenal. Um, and let's see, book number six that I read was A Dragon's Legacy by Deborah Wolf. And I have had this book on my bookshelf for over a year now. Like, I bought it when it was on sale uh, with Barnes & Noble's Double Discount Day last year because it came out last year and I was really attracted to the cover. I really liked the first couple chapters that I read. And, um, but it just sat on my bookshelf forever. And if you remember from my unhauling video, um, couple months ago I finally decided that I was just gonna keep it and maybe sit down and read it one day and then last week the sequel came out so I figured I might as well give it a try now because if I don't do it now I'm never gonna get to it since I had already decided it was May Fantasy Adventure Month yeah uh, that is how that happened and it took me a solid week and a half to read it because it was really really long like it came out to be about 500 pages, a little shy of. The font was really, really small. The spacing between the words was even smaller. Um, and it's not that it was a bad book. It was an absolutely beautiful book and there was so much humor in it. It was just slow. And it was another one of those where um, she talked around the action versus like actually delving into the action, which I think is a little bit of a cop out in my opinion, but it was phenomenal. Like it, pulled in a lot of um, Muslim themes and uh, incredibly strong female characters, which I loved. And then it had the whole barbarian versus civilized thing going on. And it had wild cats that chose to like chose their people and like made telepathic connections with them. It was really cool. And I feel like she had such a good world built and construction constructed. I can't talk today. Um, and then it was left on a very terrifying cliffhanger for all of my favorite characters. And I really want to read the second one, but it's one of those that I'm going to have to borrow from work. And we do get a two week time limit on books that we can borrow from work. And that one might actually take me longer than two weeks to, bar uh, to read just because I keep getting distracted by other things like other books. Okay. <laughs> um, I forgot where I was going with this. But so I'm probably gonna hold off a little bit on reading the second one. Uh, not because I don't want to, because I really do, because I wanna learn more about the world and what happened to the characters. I wanna know how the story progresses from where it has. And I wanna learn more about certain characters in the story. Um, but at the same time, I'm not sure if I'm quite ready to devote myself to that much of a strenuous read so soon after finishing that one. Um, that one might be end up on my June or July to TBR list. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I have about 600 other books that I want to read. That might not even be that much of an exaggeration between now and then. So stay tuned on that. The seventh book that I read, I finished yesterday. It took me about three days to read it. Um, this one I got from Book of the Month. Uh, I was kind of on the fence about reading this one because I got it because so many other people were talking about it. Um, I didn't know like anything about it before I picked it up. And that would be Circe by Madeline Miller. Um, it's supposed to be, or it was, about Circe the witch from the tale Odysseus. 
not Odysseus, the Odyssey. I am so sorry. Um, big main character's name is Odysseus, so, you know. Um, so she's the witch from the Odyssey, and it was basically her backstory and how she came to be a part of the poem and what happened after the poem ended kind of deal. And I will be the first to admit that Greek mythology is not really my thing. I learned way too much about it in high school, thought it was kind of effed up, a belief that still holds to this day, especially after I read about how Cersei's sister kind of fucked a bull, and I think that's a little bit weird. That's not a spoiler, that is common Greek mythology. It's still a little weird though, like, the Greeks were weird. I think I've used weird way too many times, and I'm sorry, I need a new adjective, I know, shut up. Um, but, anyway. I didn't quite know what to expect going into this book. It got fantastic reviews on Goodreads. I've heard a lot of people say nothing but good things about it. But again, being that Greek mythology is not really my thing, I was really, really on the fence about it. But one of my friends was like, you need to read it because I want to know if it's worth reading because she got it, I think, as book of the month as well. So I finally gave up and not really gave up, but I gave in and read it and this start of it was really really slow and I was just like good lord if this book drags on like this for another hundred pages I'm going to scream and throw it against the wall and give up on it. I'm glad I didn't because after about 50 or so pages it really really started picking up. Um, she finally got away from the halls and everything and her parents where she was just basically I'm the quiet timid one and once she discovered her powers it got so good. The writing in it was wonderful. Cersei was such a badass character and such a good person and I loved her. Um, all she ever wanted to do was make people happy and I identify way too much with that and she actually felt remorse for her actions and I was just like ah! And then she actually got to fix some of it and yeah. I, I like books where characters do the right things for the right reasons and try their best and when they do bad things they feel bad about it. And I also like books that, you know, end on a good note. And that's all I'm saying. I'm not giving anything away. But I was really happy with how it ended. And I really enjoyed that book a lot more than I thought I was going to. And I actually ended up checking out the author's other book from the library, which is called Song of Achilles. And as you can guess, it's about Achilles. And it's apparently supposed to be kind of like a spin off the Iliad. So. Um, Cersei also made me want to read the Odyssey, so I did a lot of, uh, research. I forgot the word for research. Woo! Um, I did a lot of research on which translation to get, and I'm actually gonna go with the most recent one by Emily Wilson, because I've heard that she is, does a phenomenal job with it, and she, like, puts a little bit more of a feminist spin on it. Like, not really, but more so than any of the other ones do. And I'm really interested to see how all of that works out. So I have put that on hold at the library because that's gonna be another thing that takes me forever to read. And I don't wanna borrow that one from work because it's a $40 book and I don't like to lose that one or do anything to harm it kind of deal. Um, so yeah, I'm going to read the Odyssey at some point, which I have never done before. And I'm really excited for because I feel like it's going to be a good one. Um, plus, it's actually a poem that people like to talk about instead of all the poetry that I tend to read, which is all the Instagram poetry, which people tend to make fun of a lot, but I don't care. I like it. So anyway, that rant aside, um, the last two books I plan on reading the month, this month, um, are Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. And if you're not familiar with that, apparently he's like this huge deal in fantasy. Um, he, Name of the Wind is the first in the King Killer Chronicles. Um, which I think, I could be wrong about this, so don't quote me, but I think he's kind of in the same boat of J.R.R. George, not J. George R. R. Martin, where he has yet to finish the next book in his series, and it's been forever, and people are freaking out about it. So, of course, I'm jumping on this train of reading the book. I've read um, the first hundred or so pages of it. Absolutely love it. It is fantastic. It's quirky. It's sarcastic. There's already been a lot of action in it that features a traveling troupe. All of my favorite things, basically. So I'm really excited to keep reading it. Um, I'll let you know when I finish it kind of deal. I am in love with it already. Um, so yeah, even though it's like 650 pages, almost 700 pages kind of deal, I feel like it's going to be a really fast read and I'm super, super excited to finish reading it. And then, 
Oh, I forgot. The eighth book I read this month was actually Fahrenheit 451, because I started watching the um, movie with Michael B. Jordan in it that just came out on HBO, and the movie was fantastic. I only watched the first, like, 45 minutes of it, and then fell asleep because I was exhausted. But I really, really liked what I saw, and I'm definitely going to go back and finish it soon um, when I'm actually awake. Not right now, because I'm, like, jumping off the walls for other reasons right now. Um, but... I did read the book. It took me like three hours because it was really short. I wasn't really that big of a fan of it. It kind of fell in the same line of a lot of other classics where it was just like word dump, meaningful moment dump, yay, and then the character really didn't do anything all that special. I don't know. Yeah, he chose the right thing for the right reasons, but I just, I don't know. I don't like classics very much. I just don't because I think they're kind of boring. And I like books with lots of action and don't sit there and spoon feed you what they're trying to say over and over again. So I don't know. I did give it four stars because again, it did say a lot of good things about books and it did talk a lot about making the right decision, which is always a good idea. And the movie I feel like did a little bit better job because I think it was actively making a statement about today's society instead of like the 1940s society, which the book was trying to do. Um, 1950s, 1940s, that time period, you know what I'm trying to say, it's fine. Um, and the movie is just like, bam, 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 this is what's going on in today's society, this is why we need books kind of deal, and like, it's just a hell of a lot more relevant, while staying true, I think, to the book, in my opinion. I don't know, I could be totally full of shit, and people could hate the movie. I don't know, but I like the movie, and in my opinion, that's all that matters. So, anyway, moving on. Um, and then the last book that I want to read this month is Song of Achilles um, by Madeline Miller, which she wrote before Circe, but I really like Circe, so I'm really excited to read Song of Achilles, which I believe I've already talked about, where it's like basically the Iliad um, retelling a little bit, where Circe was the Odyssey retelling a little bit. So, I'm excited about that. I haven't read any part of it yet. Um, it did end up in my Instagram <laughs> um, feed with my cat because she was posing in front of it and looking all cute and cuddly. Links below if you want to go check that out and follow me on Instagram if you want. Um, so yeah, I will let you guys know when I read that one maybe too. Um, and it might inspire me to read the Iliad, and I'll just have a month where I do nothing but read classics, even though I feel like that would be painful. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, <laughs> that about does it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this rambling mess of the b fantasy adventure book month wrap-up. Um, this is probably going to be the only themed month that I do, mostly because I do tend to jump around in the genres that I read, because it helps keep me motivated to read because a lot of times books in the genre, same genre no matter how different they claim to be do tend to follow the same patterns and I do get bored of that and in order to keep me interested in reading I do have to mix it up from time to time but again like I said I was just on this huge fantasy adventure kick and said well, why the hell not and kept going with it so anyway um long story short <laughs> puns get it because I'm talking about stories yeah no okay I'll stop um that's it for this video. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you would like to see more, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, whatever floats your boat, and I will see you all very soon.